selecting the mouse X and the mouse Y movement. What we want to do is disable those when we press the right mouse button and then when we press the right mouse button again it should enable them again. So it's fairly easy using the channels we've already looked at. All we need is to get a value operator and we'll use a uh, toggle value triggered. There we go and now what we want to do is get a channel switch. Let's get a channel switch and we'll set it to value and now we need to get a user input channel and this can be set to right mouse down so when our rice mouse is down it should toggle this value and let's now connect this up to our input here so let's have a look and see what happens when I press the right mouse button you can see that now it has locks it and when I press it again it's enabled it again so let's basically take a shortcut from uh, this toggle value here and we'll use the same thing for a channel switch on the Y mouse value we have over here for the input so let's have a look at this and see how it works so we've got our user input here which is our detecting if our right mouse button has been pressed if it has been pressed it will toggle this value between 1 and 0 when this value is on 1 it's going to call nothing here because our channel switch will make it call the second child um, which is empty so basically nothing will happen and therefore we can move our mouse cursor around without it affecting the camera's rotation when we press the right mouse button again what will happen is it will toggle this value to 0 and then 0 will call the input for the mouse and that will be fed through and our mouse movement will then be affecting the camera again. So let's go through to the animation section and try it out. So you can see now I'm in run mode looking through the walk free camera and my mouse cursor isn't affecting anything. As soon as I click the right mouse button you can see it's enabled again so I can walk and navigate my environment. So if we walk over towards the switch press the right mouse button now and oops press the right mouse button and then when my mouse is over it I can freely control the cursor to put my mouse over whatever objects I like. As soon as I've finished working on the switch I can right click again and navigate the environment. We'll now look at creating the switch logic. So we've already got the dial to illuminate red when the, the user puts their cursor over it but what we want to happen next is that when they hold their left mouse button down um, and then move the mouse up and down the dial should actually rotate and as soon as they release their mouse button the switch is deactivated and the rotation of the dial will be locked. So let's go over to our logic section we created over there and you can see we've already created a group here called fan switch logic. Now this is where we're going to create this logic. So we want it to be activated by the left mouse button so let's get a user input channel and double click that and it's already set to left mouse button down so that's absolutely fine. Now what we're going to do is get a trigger channel from here and as well as a trigger channel we need something called a set value and also a value channel. Now basically what we're going to do is this, we connect the left mouse button up to the trigger, the set value will be the second child of the trigger and the value will be connected up as the second child of our set value. Now what happens here is as soon as we press our left mouse button down um, the trigger will receive a value of 1 and if we double click it you can see at the moment it triggers when it receives an input low to high at a value of 1. So as soon as this value goes from 0 and reaches 1 our trigger will then call its child which in this case is the set value channel. Now the trigger works a bit differently from the if channel because with the if channel as soon as uh, it receives a value of 1 or greater it will continuously call its children with the trigger channel it will only call it for one frame so what will happen as soon as it receives a value of one from our user input the trigger channel just for one frame will call our set value channel which will perform its operation so in this case 
the set value channel, if I double click it and type a value of 1, what will happen now is as soon as it was called it's going to set the value we've connected to it to 1. So let's connect this up now and see if it works. So I'm hoping now that as soon as I put it in run mode, as soon as I left click, our trigger should then call our set value and our set value should then set this value channel to 1. So you can see that works. And you can see every time I left click, it's called just once. You see the yellow outline around the channel indicates that it's being called. So this is working fine. So this is our logic to switch our dial on. Now we want some logic to switch the dial off again. So this is going to be very similar. I'm just copying these channels over. I'm going to take a shortcut from our user input. And again, we're going to use this for the trigger. But this time, we're going to change our trigger so that it triggers on value decrease. So now, as soon as we let go of the mouse button and the value of the mouse changes from 1 to 0 because it's no longer being pressed, our trigger will then call its children. So let's now copy the set value again. So we're going to use a similar set value. This time we want to set to 0 and we're going to create a shortcut from the value which we are setting and connect it up to here as well to the second child. Okay, great. So now this should work. So effectively what we're doing here now, as soon as we press the mouse button, this value changes to 1. This value is this trigger channel is then going to call the set value channel here, which will set the value channel to 1. When we release the mouse button, this trigger here will trigger and it will set the same value. So you see it's just shortcut from one to the other, the same value. It's going to set it to 0. So let's place it into run mode and see if this works. So you can see I press the left mouse button, the values change to 1. As soon as I release the mouse button, it's setting to 0 again. Okay, so this is working, but at the moment this is totally independent of our switch. Really, we only want our switch to be enabled when the mouse is over the uh, switch and we click. So at the moment, we only are checking whether um, we're clicking or not. We want to check for both situations. So let's go over to our switch and um, we want to take a shortcut from the detect mouse collision and bring that over to the logic here. And what we're going to do now is get an expression value from our channel list. And in here, we are going to link it up like so. Now, in our expression value, all we want to put in here is A and B. So what the expression value is going to check now is if both of these values are true, or if both of these values are 1 or greater, then um, it will return a value of 1. And then, obviously, when our trigger accepts a value of 1, as soon as it receives a value of 1, it will then activate the set value. So let's see if it works now. You can see now I'm clicking anywhere and it's no longer setting our value to 1 because we're not receiving the information from the detect mouse collision. It's receiving a 0 from here. But if I put my mouse over here and then click, you can see it is enabling the switch. And then wherever my mouse is, as soon as I let go, it disables the switch again. So the switch functionality is now working. Let's now look at making the dial rotate. So you can see we've already got a channel caller here for the dial rotation logic. We can use this channel caller um, to put all our logic underneath. So first thing we need to do is go to the template section and drag in a new template which is uh, limit relative value. So this is a value operator, so going into operators, value operators, and then find from here limit relative value. So drag that into the channel graph. Now what this channel basically does is it takes an input value here, and based on that input value, um, it will give an output. And this output will be limited between the two values which you specify here. So in this case, let's use a user input for our input value. So let's go to the channel list and get a user input channel and link it up here. 
and in here let's use uh, mouse delta position absolute Y so that's basically the vertical movement of our mouse and I'm going to connect this up here to our dial rotation logic now when we place it in run mode you should be able to see that as I move the mouse up and I'm moving the mouse down again now this channel basically uses this input to move between these two values here